Let's go! Let's see if we can get a couple more Giffy Cats out of this because it is FX DFW Cephalon versus SS Guy. It's gonna be this is gonna be a clash of some titans right now. <laughs> Cephalon usually known for his PM gameplay, but here tonight he's gonna be rocking that Smash 4, rocking yeah. that Roy like we mm. know him for. Yeah, it seems like he's he's kind of stepping away from other Smash games, mm -hmm. uh, focusing more on this beefed up Roy. Oh yeah. And I don't blame him. Roy has gotten so many buffs, uh, especially when you consider him to his melee counterpart. He's been given some love. He's been given some oh, love. Oh, so much love. Meanwhile, SS guy always rocking the Mega Man. He's our local, you know, player for that character. We, we don't see any other Mega Man, really. Mm -hmm. but here we go. Game number one. All right, so what we're going to see here is one character Mega Man trying to space out Roy with projectiles. And he's trying to he's probably going to try to combat that with his own range because hitbox. of his disjoint. Yeah. Exactly. So how I guess Cephalon interacts with the array of projectiles that SS Guy throws out is going to be the theme of the matchup overall. Oh, yeah. The only thing that makes this a little bit harder for Roy than it would any other uh, sword character is it's that his tip is not nearly as strong. Exactly. He gets his power primarily from the hilt, if I remember correctly. Yes. And uh, So really, even though he's a sword character, he feels kind of like an up-close brawler because he still wants to get really close into you. Ooh, almost got that forward smash, but SS guy was wise and used the down tilt to get out of it. And I like the way that Cephalon kind of just threw up the saw as well. Yeah. That was interesting. Well, that's I think if you are a character with no projectiles yourself, a way to deal with Mega Man's saw is to just throw it up because that takes the longest for him to get use of it again. Yeah, and that the same could be said about uh, Rob's top as well. Yes. You know? A lot of players try to just throw it straight off of the stage, and if you throw it up, like you mentioned before, it, it has to take so long to float back down. That's just so much time for your opponent to not have that projectile available. Exactly. A lot of the time people are thinking, oh, they put out this projectile, I have to now use it against them, make them think twice about it. But sometimes the best way to use it against them is to let them not use it. Ooh, that's this guy getting that back there, waiting. It's caught by the nair from Cephalon. Look at him just patiently closing the gap. Any good hit from... Roy right now will probably kill Mega Man. It's just a matter of if SS guy gets close. Mm. See, that was the that was the hilt. Or that was not the hilt. That was the, the tip. tip. Yeah, doesn't have that much knockdown. Any unsafe move on Roy's shield right now will be an up out of shield, and it'll be death for Mega Man. I think what I like about Cephalon is that he's not trying to contest space too uh, right. too aggressively. Right? He is slowly. Taking over, taking over, but SS Guy answering right back with a nice back air. Making sure that it's a clean 0-0 zero, zero game. Mm -hmm. We are at one stock apiece here. And what, I, what I love is this just, uh, Cephalon is so patient, he doesn't let the projectiles bother him so much. He knows how to play around them and not just lose the matchup. Mm -hmm. yep. We've already seen it. Plenty of perfect shields from Cephalon's side. If you're ever a, a person who struggles against projectile characters, step up your perfect shield game. Because what they're doing when they throw out the projectiles is they're waiting for you to use your jump. Then you're in the air, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll throw out more projectiles and their bait out, you'll double jump. And once that's gone, they will have their way with you. And, and especially whenever you're in the air, you, you have a lot less options overall than whenever you're on the ground exactly. from an offensive and defensive standpoint. And yep. so uh, it's, it's really important to just make sure that you're not conditioned by your opponent's projectiles overall. If you're able to do the running perfect shields and get up close to your opponent, sometimes when they throw out the projectile, it's not even safe for them to throw out if you can perfect shield it because you can get in close and punish the lag. There's another back throw from SS guy trying to find oh, it. Gets the stage spike. That was gorgeous. And was yeah. that close enough to the point I where he couldn't that, tech that? I don't think that was techable. So, That's crazy. For those of you who don't know, there's been some really interesting stuff that we've recently found about Smash 4, is that if you are still in hit stun, when you hit the wall that you could normally tech, you won't be able to tech it. It's actually not techable. You'll just bounce straight off. Mm -hmm. And I think that because of the way that the back air works, you know yeah. how it's a couple of hits, it's very well possible he was still in that hit stun. Oh, oh of course. And he, could, he just couldn't tech it. I wow. think he was definitely close enough for that to be called into question at the very least. SS Guy taking game number one over Cephalon, but Cephalon is one of those players who we say all the time, he's just so intelligent. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that loser's bracket Cephalon is a terrifying thing to deal with. Oh, yeah. Game two Cephalon is also terrifying to deal with, because once he lost game one, he knows that this is time to go man mode. He has to go in and <laughs> get just steal that game from the opponent. Let's see if he can step it up. And, and this is, I think, one thing that I really like about Cephalon's play overall. It's just yeah. how methodical he is about taking space. Oh. Ooh. I think that was an SA hit from SS guy. Yeah, one not thing. what he needs. But one thing that was really good about what Cephalon was doing is he's really good at taking away options. Like, 
I noticed that when he was at the ledge, he would charge the neutral B. He knows that doesn't have a lot of lag, so that'll cover the neutral get up. And then he was able to jab right after to cover them dropping the shield. Ah. Nice. Now look at Sephon using a lot of those double edge dances as well. I'm digging okay. it. Actually, a very good move in this game. Nice Nair, and he's going to use the fair just to push off SS Guy a little bit more. Ooh. Good wait. So SS Guy looks like he's been going too for, for too many neutral get ups. And Sethon saw that, and he's like, okay, if you're just going to keep standing up in my face and holding shield, I'm going to grab you for it. Ah. There very good point, neighbor. And look, that flare blade coming in clutch. Ooh, and SS Guy weaving just around that fair. Ooh, good jab. Roy's jab so good at covering space. Reminds me of Marth's up tilt a little bit or Marth's jab in the way that it's just a fast way to cover space. And that's good because even though Roy is pretty strong, like Marth, uh, some of his stronger attacks, in particular the smash attacks, they might come out quick, but they have a lot of end lag to exactly. them. Exactly. And that's what SS guy is also looking for, is opportunities to punish based off of those. Off the lag, yeah. Mm -hmm. He wants to, as soon as you're in lag, he wants to find a way Ooh. to wall you out. He's going to need to find a way to build back his composure because we are going really to game nice three. Here. Yeah, that back here. He said, you know what? I, let me take a page right out of your book. Yeah. <laughs> I like that bear. How, how do you like it? All right. So we know that SS guy SD'd, but that was still like a clean stock. Oh, it yeah. It was still a two stock. So, I mean, he took, Sabon took an entire stock without losing his. So he was ahead that whole game. And I think the Terry, uh, SS guy really needs to think about that going into the next game, what options he's doing that have mm -hmm. become predictable. Because once your projectiles and stuff become really predictable, it gets easy to get Yes. In. Yes. Now I know, I noticed personally that he keeps doing the neutral ledge get up and the shield. Teflon punished him for that once. Yeah, but just standing on the ledge uh, after the down tilt, he got the grab afterwards. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see if this guy can maybe dig into his bag of tricks, find some mix-ups. Ooh, interesting. So if that up smash doesn't hit all the hits, it kind of trips you if you're on a platform. Mm. I think cool. th I think that's because it has like semi spike properties. Oh wow! To keep you into the hits, but it won't hit you with all of them if you're on a platform because the hitbox is weird. So it'll pull you into the ground and you'll get tripped. Cephalon already starting off very strong. About a 30% differential between both of these players right now. Ooh! But as this guy, he has Cephalon a bit on the ropes right now. Now, off into this we ledge. just need to see how long SS guy can keep him on the ledge. But now he's just giving up yes. space. Yes, yes, and that's one thing, right? Um, I think a lot about um, because you know a lot of the times I commentate melee, I look right. at players like Armada, right? And the way that they use lasers are so different. Like Armada, right. left, the way that they use lasers are so different from other players, in the sense that they don't retreat in laser, right? They right. will laser right within this realm, this threshold where you know that they can back off if they need to, they can attack if they need to. It's very ambiguous. Right. And like you mentioned before, SS guy, whenever he's using these projectiles, seems to be giving up a lot of space. And I like this a little bit more. He's like, seems to be contesting more space, using the projectiles a little bit more aggressively rather than defense. Right, I would much rather see him like try to pin Roy down instead of backing up and like creating the space that way. Because when he does that, he's giving Roy center stage. Yeah, and, and the sword's been, all of them really benefit from positioning. Nice, Solid. sure you. That Solid up to was excellent. It was a really good punish on an unsafe move on his shield. And now let's see how far he can extend the lead. Ooh, getting that grab after that perfect shield. Not a huge punish there, but he gets another one for good measure. Nice up airs. Trying to carry him off the top. Ooh. And the, the big thing about Smash 4's metagame is how far you can carry your lead once you take it. Because rage is so important, and the stock leads when you're playing a two-stock game can just uh, change everything. Mm -hmm. Stefan, it is so critical that he closes out right now. Oh, the LP doesn't quite land on the top platform, I think, like he wanted. Um, and he doesn't land on the uh, platform next to it either. I know that, um, like, right now, Stefan's kind of kind of antsy for the kill, so we yeah. went for a couple of unsafe things. Exactly. And that's, gonna, that's just going to net him some percent that he does not need to deal with right now. Let's see if he can maybe get the read that he needs. The double edge dance. And that's another thing about Mega Man as a character is because he plays ooh, very good closing out that stock when he got to. But because he's a character that just feeds off of just pestering you from afar with projectiles, is if you lose your lead against Mega Man, it's so frustrating. It hurts your mentality. Ooh, does someone have a jump here? Yes, he just used it. That's good, but look at the Trump back here. Stephon. Still has his jump. Mm -hmm. And I like it. He still retains that tricky, tricky recovery. The recovery mix-ups definitely coming in the clutch. Stuff that he is known for. Mm -hmm. Look at that shield whittling down, but 
Ooh. Oh, I thought that, that might have been a back throw, but I'm not sure if it would have killed with that percent. Maybe 20 more. Maybe. You know, with no rage, I'm not sure about back throw killing there. And he's inching closer and closer to the percentage he needs. Cephalon on the brink of going to the loser's bracket. Yeah, but with all of this rage and that 50% that he's built up on Mega Man, I know that Roy is a killing machine. Yes, he's the Terminator. Mm -hmm. I mean, Roy's rage is like Lucario almost sometimes when I watch him. I feel like he's just... He benefits from it so much because his kill moves are so strong. Yeah, Roy's Rage is equivalent to the Indian Dad, and you just got to be on your report card. Like, it's over. Game over, man. You, you, can't, you can't get that beat. Yeah, that's a bad matchup. <laughs> <laughs> Bees on your report card and an Indian Dad, that's a bad matchup. That's, you lose that like 100-0. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's rough stuff. But either way, getting back to the match, Cephalon has actually made this really close. Both players at kill percent. He noticed that he was being a little bit too aggressive, so he started to be a little bit more patient. He started to space his moves a little bit more instead of throwing something out. After he got that stock, he's like, all right, I'm lax. This guy's setting up for the bear. Couldn't find the trump that time, though. Nice, cutting off the double-edged dance. That was so smart. He cut it off that time instead of going for the full sequence like we had before. Mm -hmm. Very good catching the roll. Mm -hmm. All right, now he has SS guy in the corner. Exactly How is he going to use this space? It's very good. Nice, fair. I don't know if he can make this back. He's doing a really good job of boxing him out. No, That's he didn't it. have a jump. Cephalon clicked his jump. That's it was very it. smart just use of the space to keep him out of the corner and take the jump. That was a beautiful, beautiful comeback from Cephalon. Every single game I watch SS Guy play, somebody makes like a huge full stock comeback. 